In April of 2014, the National Physical Activity Plan Alliance, in collaboration with the American College of Sports Medicine, released the groundbreaking 2014 United States Report Card on Physical Activity for Children and Youth. The report card is the first in an historic series of report cards that will provide an unprecedented benchmark using a common methodology for this critical public health issue. The report card was created to assess levels of physical activity and sedentary behaviors in children and youth, facilitators and barriers for physical activity, and related health outcomes. The report card is an evidence-based tool providing a comprehensive evaluation of the physical activity levels and indicators influencing physical activity among children and youth. The report card evaluated and graded 10 different key indicators. Overall physical activity, America's grade D-, sedentary behaviors, America's grade D, active transportation, America's grade F, organized sport participation, America's grade C-, school, America's grade C-, Community and the Built Environment, America's Grade, B-. The remaining four indicators received incomplete grades due to a lack of available data, but will be important to track in future years. Based on the assessment and grades, six major themes were identified and are now the focus of education and promotional efforts to improve the nation's performance when it comes to the physical activity of children and youth. Dr. Peter Katzmarzik, Chair of the U.S. Report Card Research Advisory Committee, and Dr. Russell Pate, Chair of the National Physical Activity Plan Alliance, discussed the six outcomes and the implications for each. Outcome 1. Most children spend too little time being physically active and too much time in sedentary pursuits. We found that approximately 25% of American kids are meeting the physical activity guidelines. On the other hand, approximately 50% of kids are not meeting the guidelines for sedentary behavior. They're simply watching too much television and spending too much time in front of the screen. This is cause for concern. We must attack both of those problems as, as independent problems. Uh, uh, we'll need to take action to promote higher levels of physical activity, moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity in, in our kids and we'll need to take other actions to reduce their time spent in, in sedentary behaviors. Uh, I think we know that attacking just one or the other of the, of the problems uh, is unlikely to solve both problems. We'll need actions targeted at, at both of those outcomes. Outcome two, youth sports and physical education are promising approaches, but more exposure to high quality programs is needed. Well, a tremendous resource in our society is that most children do take school physical education and uh, millions and millions of American kids are involved in uh, organized youth sport programs. Uh, the, the challenge we have is for them to, to optimize their levels of physical activity when they're in both of those settings. Uh, we know that uh, in both school physical education and in, in many youth sport programs, uh, there, there are uh, uh, many opportunities for kids to be more active. They often spend too much time waiting to participate and not as much time as they could actually being engaged in, uh, uh, in moderate to vigorous physical activity. So uh, they're, they're great opportunities because kids uh, in physical education and in youth sport are clearly in settings where they can be physically active. We just need to make sure that we make the most of those opportunities. Outcome three. Active transport to and from school is a great opportunity for physical activity, but far too few children walk or ride bikes to school today. The prevalence of children who are actively transporting to school, either taking their bicycle or walking, has decreased dramatically. In 1969, almost half of the children in the U.S. were taking their bicycle or walking. However, today it's down to about 13%. Now what has really changed is that the children are no longer actively transporting, but they're taking the car or being driven to school. So this has had a dramatic impact as it's taken that opportunity out of their lives to be physically active. 
uh, the opportunity for kids to, uh, to get to school by walking or cycling is a tremendous opportunity for them uh, to get healthful physical activity both in the morning and again in the afternoon. You know, our, our guideline for physical activity is that kids should be active an hour a day. And uh, if a child uh, you know, walks to school in the morning, that's probably going to take 15 or 20 minutes. And if they do the same thing getting home in the afternoon, they're, they're already two-thirds of the way to the 60-minute to the daily guideline. So uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for uh, millions of American kids to be more active than they are today. And we, we need to take action to uh, reintegrate active transport to school uh, in, into the kind of normal behavior of our, of our society. Outcome four. Most children live near parks, but many more need to use them regularly for healthful physical activity. The, the access that our children have to parks and green spaces where they can be physically active. Now, unfortunately, the overall physical activity score uh, is not consistent with, uh, you know, with the score for uh, access to, to activity spaces. So clearly the message is um, the, the facilities are available. Uh, we have to take action to get our kids uh, making better, much more extensive, much more frequent use of the facilities that we now know are uh, proximal to their homes. Now what we found is just having access to parks doesn't necessarily mean that kids are going to be physically active. So we need to understand a little bit more about how to get these parks filled with kids. So we didn't understand very well how uh, access to the parks would actually lead to physical activity without programming in the parks, without having the parks or playgrounds connected to the uh, surrounding neighborhoods. So if the park is there, but if it's not accessible to the children or that it's in disrepair, it really doesn't do much good. So I think we need to take a deeper dive in coming years to better understand how to get kids active in these parks, how to make them more accessible, and put some programming there so there are things for the kids to do. Outcome five. A robust system is needed to monitor physical fitness among children. You know, one of the tenets of public health is that we need to measure things to be able to understand them and to be able to track our, our progress at changing these things. So for physical fitness, we don't really have a good understanding right now of where our kids lie in terms of international comparisons or comparing to the past. So if we want to improve the physical fitness of our kids, we need to first measure it so that we can better track how things change over time. Unfortunately, we had to score health-related fitness uh, as an incomplete in the report card, and that's because we do not currently have an ongoing uh, robust national surveillance system for monitoring uh, fitness in American kids. Uh, it's true that uh, between the 1950s and the 1980s, we regularly in the U.S. conducted uh, large-scale surveys of uh, fitness in, in American kids. Uh, unfortunately, we got away from that practice uh, after the mid-80s, and uh, we, we uh, strongly believe that it's important for us to reestablish uh, fitness as a component of our national surveillance systems in monitoring the health of American kids. Outcome six. Federal government can and should do more to support state and local initiatives that promote physical activity. Physical activity uh, remains the new kid on the block in, uh, in the public health system in the United States. And even though much progress has been made in, in recent decades to establish an important role for the federal government in uh, supporting physical activity initiatives around the country, uh, much remains to be done. Um, the, uh, the, the infrastructure in the public health system to support uh, meaningful physical activity promotion programs uh, uh, r remains inadequate and uh, uh, we think it's very important for the federal government to provide leadership to uh, help us make progress over time in building a much more robust uh, infrastructure in our public health system in the U.S. Yes, the federal government as well as state and local governments have a, have a real role to play at the, in the promotion of physical activity, particularly when it comes to children. Not only does the government have a role, but parents have a role, the schools have a role, as well as industry. So I think that by coming together, and if everyone can get on the same page, I think we'll be much better off. Based on these six outcomes, the report card has highlighted areas that are doing well and others that require action. 
As a result, the following action steps were identified to improve the grades on the United States Report Card on Physical Activity for Children and Youth. Use the report card as an advocacy tool and call to action for those who can help implement new initiatives, programs, and policies in support of healthy environments that improve the physical activity levels and health of children. The government needs to support, fund, and expand programs that systematically assess fitness levels of children deliver on integrating physical activity into daily life, and encourage active transportation. Together with government, concerted action is required from parents, schools, and industry to ensure children have safe environments and programming opportunities to be active. The report card on physical activity for children and youth should galvanize researchers, health professionals, community members, policymakers, and parents across the United States to enhance physical activity opportunities for children that lead to improved health, prevention of disease and disability, and an enhanced quality of life.